Welcome everybody to number six, assignment uh, six, the tabletop magic course. We're looking at shadows today and the work that was done by everybody. So I'm uh, pretty excited about this. Um, take one more quick through here and see if Alan Mason's here. He's not here yet. Mark Batista is here though. I believe. There he is. Mark, this is uh, this is really cool. I really enjoyed the, the, uh, the, the assignment. Um, it's a whole different way of looking at the objects. Um, it, it's, it, I, I, I just had a blast, uh, you know, exploring the light coming through, through the uh, glass objects. Uh, and it's, uh, you're, this is sunlight, correct? Uh, yes, it was sunlight uh, coming through a, a skylight. Um, yeah. Had a challenge yeah. though that, that light constantly moved. I had to constantly move my setup as the, uh, as the, the 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 shape of the light kept kept trying to move across the yeah, room, it does. It, it it it. I mean, who would have known the sun moves? I mean, my God. I mean, <laughs> first time I saw, I was shocked too. The the thing that you have to remember is when you're on location, and every, the the tension is piling up, and you've got four shots to do, and the sun is going down. This is a matter of science. The sun goes down faster on those particular days. Just it zooms to the horizon. This is uh, this is beautiful. This just I love it. I think this is a great shot. Um, Thank you. you satisfied the assignment beautifully. You did it. Uh, you know, there's no doubt in our mind what these bottles look like. And then you laid one down just to remind us and get the color through. Yeah, this and the sun is a perfect light for this because it's so far away. It's super flat, super even. Can't get any more even than the sun. So really cool. I, I uh, got to think it's just a whole, whole other way of, of uh, you know, a whole other option of shooting that I never, never really contemplated it before. So cool. I appreciate you op opening that up. And you, you put this dark down at the bottom, which is, is kind of yeah, fun. There was, there was a question, you know, some, some people were questioning whether I should have it as a clean image. I, I kind of like the shadow. To me, it gave a sense of space, a sense of, of uh, placement. And the contrast between that soft shadow and the harder shadows, I, I thought was interesting. Yeah. Um, but um, I tried it the clean way too. Um, I guess if it was a, an assignment uh, for for a job, you know, I'd give the client probably both. Um, yeah, I mean, what both you and let them, let them see. There's certainly no no reason why you couldn't do both. And let the client the client choose. Um, yeah. I, I appreciate the feedback. It, it you know, was um, surprising to me. I won't say I don't like it. I'm not going to say that I love it. It was surprising, and I love it when I'm surprised. You know, when you're surprised by something, that's a good feeling right there. So, um, surprised in a good way. I, I thought you did a great job. Really good job, Mark. Thank you. There it is. Nice. So you are using just a little bit that uh, these foam cars aren't really adding to the light. They're cleaning up the reflection. They're yeah, just everything to, nice and um, even. Yeah, okay. um, I did have a little trouble with that dark bottle on the left, um, really trying to pump enough light back into it. Um, that, that was challenging. Uh, I did in post, I did have to uh, use a curve adjustment layer to bring, bring the, uh, the, uh, the, the luminosity up a little bit. Very good. Very good. Nicely done. Thank you. Ah, uh, Joe, are these Morning. are these tuning forks? Yes, they are. Wow, that's very solid shot, Joe. Thanks. Now this is um, obviously a, a hard light in the studio. Right. Um, is this like what is this bare bolt? Where we got a behind bare bolt AD two, right? Okay. I had to put it there. I wanted it. I had it farther away, but then the shadow went up off the off the image. Um, that's mm -hmm. about the close farthest I could get it. Yep. Yeah, very good. And you can see, folks, even at that distance, you can see it starts to get soft because it's farther away from the thing that's blocking the light. It just super sharp here and it starts to soften out up here. That's what happens. But when the sun is
93 million miles away. Still gets a little soft up here, but it'll hold that sharp just to the edge there. Pretty cool. That's great, Joe. Super cool shot. Super cool shot. Now, people who don't own a tuning fork are, they're not, they're going to be confused, but that's okay. I had to dig into my old medical supplies. I had a bunch of ideas, but everyone showed up in all the videos you played. So I had to look for something. Um, all right. Mari. Hi, Dan. This is really cool. You made a super cool shot out of an old wooden spoon thing, fork. The original, this is the original spork. Uh, it's actually bigger. It's a salad fork. There's a, you know, a, another like spatula type thing that goes with it. Yeah, it's really cool. Just really cool. You designed Thanks. your image with the shadow. That's the design of the picture. The picture is, you know, we, we cropped off the, the salad fork up there. Got some beautiful light on the salad fork, by the way. Very nice light on the salad fork. I like I just kind of comes in right there. Um, we have texture on the fork because of the hard light. And then we got this big, big uh, shadow that accentuates what the subject is doing down here. That's remarkable. Such a cool shot. Is this uh, sunlight or? No, it's a speed light. Speed light. Uh -huh. Very cool. Let's look at your behind the scenes. What is the background? It looks like painted wood or? Yeah, it's just blue painted wood. Very cool. When I look at this, I have the feeling that I'm looking across at something with the sun coming down on it. I don't have the feeling I'm looking down and across, but that's just, you know, that's just me. Um, that's, that's a great shot. Yeah, I, I actually um, hand held the camera overhead, but I couldn't get a behind the scenes shot of that. <laughs> well, uh, you guys are setting the bar really high up front here. Pretty cool shots. Nice shot, Mari. Really Thanks. nice. Lee. Is Lee here yet? Lee, 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 Lee. We'll come back for Lee. Uh, Steve Pamp. Hey, good morning, Don. Good morning, Steve. Wow, this is um, just plays with the, the eyes so much and very cool adding that right there. Yeah, thanks. I did that. Yeah, I did that on purpose. I had a couple that cut it off and, and a couple that uh, kept it in. I, I liked it a lot better with it in. Yeah, I think so. We've got these interesting color separations like it's like the blue up here um it's like there's no reason for it right but there's also <laughs> no reason not for it so boom we put it in then you repeat the color down here the green right and i was heated from pulling here. off the bottles as well yeah. yeah and then this guy coming in here just like that we have three reflections uh, it's a well-made photograph, for Thank sure. You. For sure. I just the uh, again, it's the surprise of the blue at the top. It just it's surprising. It just takes your brain and go, oh, that's cool. And it's a really bright color. And sometimes bright colors don't work. You know, they pull the eye away. But in this particular case, it doesn't pull the eye away because what supersedes it is focus. Mm -hmm. All this softness around it, eye goes right to what's in focus. And then little Easter eggs like this and the, and the, the threes, those are fun. See how you did this. It's pretty simple. Um, it's just a single speed light. Um, I blew out the tube on my, on my Godox. Um, so I had to use a speed light on this. And then I hand, I hand held it also over the top because I didn't have any way of getting the sure. camera, getting the tripod up there without having the legs in it. So, yeah. Certainly. 
shooting on the floor lay flats absolutely yep. it's the way you do it that's just cool that's just so well done great shot steve great thank you thank you very Dr. imaginative very imaginative thanks tammy morning hi tammy how are you good how are you good now what is is this photoshopped or is this shot like so this? the vase or i don't i guess they're not really vases they're just glass bottles um and the shadow from them is not photoshopped that is pretty much straight out of the camera except for i did remove some of the highlights um on the lower right hand um glass Here. bottle Over it here? had a few just major offending highlights that i didn't okay. like i left one in because i liked it and then but the white is actually um i did that in post so i originally shot it on a white sheet which of course you know when you put photograph on fabric it basically looks awful so um so i basically just selected all the fabric in photoshop and then just filled it in with white okay that's all i did okay all right but that's very cool but the shadows are pretty much just straight out of the camera. I mean, they, yeah. it was, I mean, I love the shadow parts. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, the, the, you know, we see the glass here, then we see the shadow underneath the bottle over here and all this texture of the light coming through the glass. Cause when we look at the glass, we don't necessarily see that texture yes. up here, but uh, that's cool. Interesting composition too. Look at your and I, yeah. there we go. So that's my setup. So just sunlight. Yep, just sunlight. And so I was sort of wanting just, you know, never really have done I do a lot of nature photography. Um so I don't know, that's what it sort of reminded me of doing, you know, some nature photography uh -huh. for some reason. Uh -huh. And um so product, I'm pretty new to product photography, but it was fun. I basically stood on a chair and oh, shot downward. Be careful. I didn't, yeah, I know. <laughs> I realized that I didn't put up rule number one, which is don't hurt yourself doing this yeah. stuff. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, lovely shot. Good, yeah. good challenge. And I'm, I like the fact that you were um, stepping outside of your, your normal yeah. wildlife stuff and trying something else that's neat good for you thanks judy it's judy here yes judy what are we doing here so you just basically shot the shadow right uh oh i can't hear judy oh judy it says you don't have a microphone Um, see if there's something in chat. Uh, nope, nothing in chat. Judy, um, I'm going to advise you to quit and come back in because then your microphone might, uh, might kick in. So I will watch for you to, to quit and come back in and then we'll know that, uh, that you're here and we'll come back to your shot. All right, Mark Shaw. Hi, John. Hey, Mark. What a what a cool idea. Thank you. We we know they're glasses, but we don't get a sense of the shape of the of the of the eyeglasses until we see the shadows. That's neat. That's what I was trying for. Yeah. It's, it's kind of fun. It's kind of fun. And then the light is actually picking up the gradient in the glasses, which is neat. Yeah. Good composition. Thank you. Everything kind of runs, kind of comes down through here. We got leading lines coming here. That's, that's good. That's good. That's one of those one of those things that that 
if you want to play with something to photograph um, and, and play with lighting, sunglasses are something to consider. You know, you can go to the dollar store and buy two pairs of, of dollar sunglasses uh, and, and just have a blast with them. Um, just the reflections in the, in the glass itself, the, the shapes of them, the, getting them to float, doing things. You can have a lot of fun. You can spend two or three days a month playing with your sunglasses and learning so much about light at the same time. Well done. So we got a 24 to 70. Okay, so 50 millimeter, basically. And, and you're 8,200 at eighth power. Yep. And you still got F8, huh? Oh, F18. F18. Oh, how far? Oh, sorry. I'm clicking away here. Where, 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 where? I really had to stop down for that, Donna. If I if I went any lower on the uh, on the exposure, it, it was just getting blown out. So, yeah. Really cool. Now you're very close, so you can see the inverse square law happening here, right yep. there, because your light is very, very close, but you use that as part of the composition as well. So you got that gradient. That's really, really nice. Thank you, Don. This is the best bang for the buck, money-wise and lighting available today, right there. I completely agree. I just no love doubt. that. The 8200 and the 8400, you, you can't beat them. Cannot beat them. Fantastic. Um, have you ever had the battery die on you on a shoot? No. No, neither have I. Nope. It's never happened. They, they just keep going and going. All right. We're looking for. Oh my. So Judy Hernandez was here. So it must have been a she went to sign in again and she can't get in again. So that must have been because there's something going on with her internet. All right. Well, we'll watch for her and and Mr. Mason. Jen Wilding. Hello. Fun reflections. You just had fun with this. Yep, I did. Now these are are these glasses the kind that are that are flat on the bottom like that, or are, you, are they tilted on something? No, they're balancing. They're the ones. They're the ones I used in the beverages right? class. Yep, I recognize. And they them. are so, the ones that balance. That's very cool. I love the the stripes here it's real clean here and you get a little mix of both of them here nikon d850 speed like nice. composition is nice as well and this little um color change in the middle that's one of those unexpected surprising things that just adds to the picture okay now how did you do is that paper yes it's it's uh, yeah it's it's card, really. It was yellow card and green card, but they, I changed the color a bit because the, I thought the colors were were a bit too bright. So I just I just um, turned them down a bit. Okay. Very nice. That works. Works lovely. Now, where's the edge of the card? Is it is the yellow on top of the green, or is the green on top of the yellow? The green's on top of the yellow. Okay, so the light is leading into the green here, and that's why we don't see any yeah. uh, shadow yeah. or anything. Very nice. Let's see uh, how you did it. Cool, and you just use the flash right up here? Yep, I did. Yeah? Yeah. So nice. So much fun you can have on the, on the floor. With some cards and some glasses and make neat photographs. I love that. Yep. 
I love that so much. Nicely done. Nicely Thank done. You. Yeah, Larry Davidson. Wow, Larry, that's pretty too. Pretty colors, pretty reflections. Is Larry here? Not here, okay. That's just beautiful. That reflection there is just really cool. Can't beat that. Um, rims look good all the way here. Your glassware looks good. Get the little dark rim there, a little dark rim there. Glasses stand out nicely. And of course the shadows just reinforce the shape of the, of the object. That's a very nicely done shot, sir. Very good. What is that? A single bear blub flash? Oh, that's a uh, I have uh, alien bee back there. Cool. Love it. I do. All right, that's that's cool. Is Jan here? Yeah, I'm here. That's very cool. Thanks, Jan. Thank you. Is there a second group here? I don't see where you are on here. Can you hear me? I can. All right. There you, okay. there you are. Okay. Um, this is, this is, is this black and white, by the way? No, it's color. It is color. So you really got some flat color going on here. No color bleed into this at all. That looks like perfect gray to me. That is very clever. Thank you. What are these things? Did you cut them out yourself? Yeah, I'm, I built a question mark from cardboard and So you actually cut out the question mark. Yes. How did you make it thick? How do how did I make it what? Thick. Oh, it's, it's two question marks and a stripe in between them. Ah. So it's wow. a three three D model of a question mark. Yeah. Very cool. All right. Love it. Plus, at the end of the shoot, you've got a question mark to hang up in the wall. Yes. Very handy. Yes. Well, every I artist put it next to big, my head. Every artist needs a big question mark up on the wall. It's like, why? <laughs> yeah. Why do we put ourselves through this? Very nice, Jan. That's very cool. Um, and what what camera are you using for this lens? D seven fifty. Sorry, uh, the, the camera way? is a D seven fifty. The lens is a. I think 28 to 105 Nikon. Okay. F3.5 to F4.5. Yeah. I got it very cheaply. Yeah. Yep. The only problem with those lenses in the studio is if you forget that your f stop changes as you zoom out, it makes it hard. Yeah. But but if yeah. you're aware of that and you you have tested your lens, you kind of know where those things are i had marks on my lens little scratched in little marks and i know it sounds sacrilegious to scratch in something on a lens but i scratched it in just a tiny little mark that was that went between three i had three five to four five lens once and i put a three five i got four i got uh, uh five and five 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 uh, point six or whatever the the thing was but as it changed yeah. i knew where those changes happened Okay. Great. Yeah, good. Nicely done, sir. Thank you. Don, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. I'm Judy. I'm back on. Okay. Let's go back up to your picture, Judy, which was this one. So this is purely the um, shadow. Shadow. Right. That's kind of cool i think we all know <laughs> what we're looking at here yeah 
Yeah. But it's, uh, I wanted the flowers, the, the table's really sharp, but the vase and the flowers don't seem to be as sharp. They're farther back. Right? Yeah. Yep. Right. Yep. You got to find I that tried plane different of focus ways of shooting, but. Yeah. You're, um, I think you, you got it behind the scenes here. Yeah. I kept yeah. pulling it back and I don't know if it was, I tried using a snoot and it gave me a shadow on a shadow. So it was just really mm -hmm. weird. You're better off with a bare bulb. Yeah, I did. I, there's a, yeah. just a speed light there. And actually, when I actually got that shot, I ended up moving the set over to the left there in front of that white wall. And I moved the, the light a little bit over to the right. So I did have a good eight feet, but then I, I don't know if I should have been closer for a sharper shot or I don't know. Um, I was a, Any way you do it, if you're not going to have this guy in the picture, yeah, um, you've got to end up moving him so far to the right of the of the, where the shadow is that the shadow is at that point where it's starting to break yeah yeah and that's what's happening okay here. yeah it's still so i would have cool. had thank you very nice thanks uh like a, a and thanks good, for going back a good um learning experience for that because you'll want to play with it again something that yeah. you can do with these things you can go back to them and say okay now this didn't work the way i thought it should what did i do differently or what did i do in the real world that i didn't think about in my head um, right so i would have to make that set a little bigger so i can move that flower vase over i guess or you or you have to move your light more to to the right uh -huh. and get your shadow or get your statue closer to the red oh okay yeah you gotta close the, the gap between the statue and the red and i think where you have it it's throwing a shadow right here right right and you're just you're just not going to get it with the um with the shadow if, if you get it close enough it's going to be in your picture you didn't want it so you're gonna to have to move right. this over to the side, cast the shadow on the cast. The shadow is going to be more of an angly shadow, but you should be able to crop this thing out. But you're still gonna it's still gonna be somewhat soft. Because, okay. Yeah, it's uh, not real soft, but it's softer than I wanted. Right. Right. Yeah, you'll just have to keep working with it. Yeah. You know, I mean, I limit. did. I I shot just about everything in the house and. Uh, I did get some really crisp, hard shadows, but uh, it just wasn't saying this is the shot, you know, so. Well, good. <laughs> you figured out the one you wanted. Yeah. Hey, Thank uh, you. Judy. Yeah. Oh, uh, what you could do is this. You can angle your background. Oh, right? OK. Because if your background is perpendicular to your light, uh -huh. doing shadows like this, it will be sharper. Oh, OK. Right? I'll try that. Thank you. Very nice. And Lawrence. Wow, Lawrence, this is really a beautiful shot. I done. Thank you. That's just really lovely. It looks like a piece of art. Wow, wow, wow. Thanks. You got a uh, <laughs> 12 to 40 on it. Yeah, uh, I, I like. So that's... I like your absolutely deliberate framing here, and I just wrote about being deliberate as a photographer. I did wrote a piece on medium. I think it's the most important thing we can do is to be extremely deliberate in what we do and not be sloppy or be, you know, almost there, but be as perfect. And I love this. You are dead center on that ball bottle. So I'm not so seeing any thinking. sides of that bottle at all. As I come up, I see a little bit of this bottle, but it's the same as I see over here, a little bit of this bottle. Then I see quite a bit of this bottle and quite a bit of this bottle, and it's all even. And as these things track out, this one's tracking out absolutely 
perfect, dead on. And I think that perfection in the, in the creation of this image shows in the image itself, this play of, of light here, <clears throat> technical quality is very high. The concept is very high and the resulting product is very attractive. And that's the three wins right there. This would make a beautiful print and I bet you would sell a bunch of them. You could probably turn this on its head and have it coming down. You could probably turn it and have it going up. Yeah, but I actually thought uh, if you if you look at the BTS, I um I thought in my garden uh, in meeting, and I had to squat over the squat over the bottle, so it wasn't easy to get it uh, straight. I took a, a lot of pictures, and uh, as everybody has said. Uh, with the sun moving very fast, it was uh, every uh, every photo I had to move a wee bit of the board and reframe and move and reframe and remove and uh, it, took, uh, yeah. it took a while. Yeah, and plus really pretty colors. You got some great colors to work with. Let's see the. Is there a behind the scenes? Yeah, it's in uh, the garden. Uh, no. Okay, so uh, what did you use to light light it with? It's just a sun. Is there behind the scenes? Yeah, it, it looks like there is. It's, okay. it's yeah, uh, no. Oh, there we yes, go. Yeah, cool. There you go. Sunlight. Just have to wait for the right time. Yeah. Yeah. That's very nicely done. Super shot. Thank you. Thanks. Oh, it went right to it. I should have should have done that. Ding, ding, ding. Hi. Hi. Very, very. And that's a cool glass with cool um, um, refractions in it. What a great idea using the window, the shadow of the window as well. Oh, thank you. I tried it without the windows too, but it was too much. <laughs> the light was too much. Okay, now let me ask you, mm -hmm. why did you enter this one and not this one? Well, the one thing with the egg, I sort of, I kind of like the egg in the bottle because I try to with without water. This one is with water in the glass. Mm -hmm. So I, I didn't notice at first why I was moving my camera up and down, left and right. I noticed the shadow of the egg in front, uh, the, the, the shadow of the egg actually inside the bottle too. So I was like, oh, this is something. <laughs> Yeah, there's some cool things happening with the bottle. I mean, glass throwing those reflect refractions of those things out as well. That's kind of cool from it. There's a lot going on here. That's really fun. But I got to tell you, I really like this one. Uh, my my kids, my children, do you, do you like this one too? <laughs> so I was deciding. Yeah. This I like the, the fact that this looks like a painting with a frame around it, and yet the three D of the of the the branch and the, the glass it's very surprising. It's very cool. What a fun what a, a couple of really fun shots here, Dang Yang. Really nice. Oh, thank you. And it's just window light, right? Just sun coming through. Yeah. How fast did these lines change? It, uh, because I shoot at around five o'clock in the afternoon, so the sunset is after eight, so about three hours before the sunset. Uh, so the light actually changes, uh, it changes, but not that dramatic. Yeah. Yeah. Boy, it, it uh, later in the day it seems to change faster than. Uh, oh yeah, look at that. This was taken earlier, so the, the shadow isn't nearly as far out. As it is there, yeah. Unless just that, unless that's an optical illusion with, with your lens. 
Very nice. Thank you. Very, very nice. Norm. Good morning. How you doing? All right. This was a, a sort of an experiment, not what I set out to do, but it came out kind of outrageous. So I thought it'd be fun to share it. Yeah. Um, what was the shot on? What kind of camera? Uh, that's that's uh, an Olympus uh, mirrorless. Okay. It's interesting to me what's happening here on the edges of the birds. Yeah, some of that might be um, post processing artifacts, but what um, did you did you have to do a lot of post in it? This is actually two images blended. Okay. So on the on the left, the left is just the uh, mobile. They have there are lights built into the birds. Uh -huh. So that that was the only light in the exposure, plus all the light that got scattered onto the background. And then the second shot was with a flash off to the left to make the shadows. And okay. and all that was that was almost a pure black and white picture because the flash is so bright it washed out any color or anything. Sure, that was in sure. So then it was a matter of uh, blending the two images in Photoshop. So I played around a lot. I'm not that um, accomplished with Photoshop. So I was playing around with blending modes and blend if and things like that you, until I got something that looked kind of cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, that little glow around them is a, is a tip off of Photoshop. And yeah. I'm wondering, um, if, if, are these birds cut out? Are they on their own layer? Well, yeah, the image, so the image that I got from there, I should have posted it maybe, like I said, it was almost a, almost a, uh, black and white, like no gray at all. The right. birds were slightly outlined. The background is all white and the birds were pretty, well, they're grayish, blackish. I just Okay. So then you use out. blend F then. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, it's good. They're getting a little bit of a fringe from the blend if. Just a little bit. Yeah, of fringe. I, I saw that. And I did actually, I actually managed to tune it back a little bit, but I couldn't get rid of it all. Um, but I did. I like think I it's said, because the birds, being a distance from the white, the birds aren't absolutely crisp in your shadow, correct? That's true, too. Yes. Right. They're a little soft. So the softness is, is that blend there the softness is the blend if is not blending all of it it's just leaving the black but it's grabbing a little of that gray of the soft of uh, the feather of it and that's what we're seeing there yeah yeah very cool or good idea that's kind of fun right there even yeah that's just the overhead light from yeah. um from the shop there but Anyway, I had a lot of fun with it. I spent a lot of time with it, actually, because trying to get the birds and the shadows both distinct, they're kind of bunched up near the top. And I'd like to play with it some more, but I just didn't have any more time this week. Well, play with it. Have fun with it. Yeah, it's sure. It's cool. Fun assignment. Rob Reed. You out there, Rob? Not here. Okay. Uh, do them at the end. He was a little later than 30 minutes, but we can wait to do them at the end. Rob Reed and Lee. Derek. Yeah, Derek's not here either. CMYK cubes it with an LED. Just throwing this shadow up there like that. That's Kind of cool, Derek. Kind of cool. Look at how sharp that is. It's kind of that warp here. That warp thing going up is kind of fun. That's a neat item. And it's just one light, just one uh, LED bar up there.
Nicely done, Derek. There's Rob. How you doing, Rob? Hey, I just uh, got done with what I had to do, so I'm here. This is uh, this is fun. Your your shadow up here. I wanted to make it huge. I was inspired by the National Geo posters or uh, pictures of the little bitty teeny little ant size camel, and then the huge shadow of the camel. But um, I didn't have a big enough backdrop um, and a bright enough light to, to kind of get that effect. Yeah. That's, uh, yeah, and you got fairly sharp uh, edges on this too. It was a completely dark room at night lit by just that that one LED flashlight that I turn on the lights for the behind the scenes. Yeah. And where did you shoot from? Did you get right down on the table and shoot up or? Right, yeah, right right behind that table. Uh, and I shot from various angles and I think I was kind of low on the one that I picked. That's neat. That, it's, it, that's just, there's such an optical illusion going on here. I'm looking down at the top of this box and I'm looking up at the reflection. That's. I, I was happy that I was able to get that uh, on the left side box that I was able to get that corner in the shadow that took a, a little uh, finagling. This, this shot has two vanishing points. One is the vanishing point of the lens, right? And the other yeah. is the vanishing point of the light. And that's what gives us a really interesting look. We kind of feel that it's not Photoshopped. I like the, I like the box and the, you know, the stuff here. That's very pedestrian. That's kind of fun. But you look up, up, we're looking up at this because the light is going so far up, but our camera is actually doing a different angle coming down a little bit to get the top of the boxes. That's very clever, Rob. Thank you. I was, I was pleased. I got a bit of a Dutch angle on there too, kind of like if you were in one of the other planes. Yeah. Very cool. I love it. I was love, fun. I love little surprises like that. Well done. Well done. Arnold. Thank you. I don't know. Hi, uh, Hi Arnold. How are you, man? Good. Really pretty. Thank you. Using shadows from all these little things here. Gives you behind the scenes. All right, very cool. So you're getting that's a, a single bare bulb on this side. It's a single, yeah. It's a single bare bulb on the your right side. Okay, um, and then a, with a okay. grid attachment on it. A fill card for this. Uh yeah, you can see that on the behind the scenes. Um, it's on the foreground. Yep, it's a folded card right there. So just to light the, the branding. There's so many fun little things happening in here. The, the white part of that right there, this white coming up to here, then just disappearing is all in very clear. And then we, like we can see through it to this texture back here. Here, this has got like colors coming into it. This is a little bit of both. Um, these are very, it's, it's a fun shot, Arnold. And uh, yeah, thanks. The, yeah, the, without shadows, the... the shadows add a, a, a lot of dimension to it. We really feel that side lighting. Right. Yeah, the shadows are actually uh, being um, mitigated by the specular light coming out of the prisms. So it's not a pure shadow. That's why they're, they're being cut like that because of the specular light that's coming out of the prisms. 
Yeah. That's how, that's how also very cool, by the way, the little lights that are coming from the prisms add another right. dimension of fun to the picture. You right. know, little, yeah, little were, visual surprises that happen everywhere. But if there were no uh, white cards in there, it would be totally black. Most of the prisms would be black. Well done, sir. Nice shot. Thank you. Nice shot. Very, uh, very fun. Paul. Hi, Don. Hi, Paul. <laughs> I love your idea. I, Paul, I, I wish you moved just light to the side. I'd like to see this more of this shadow here. But that's that's exactly the idea here. I yeah, I would love to see, like I say, just a little bit more of the shadow of this thing. It's it's coming at me. Um, you know, more like this, you know, really see that, that shape come in. That's very clever. You need to stay with this shot, okay? Stay with the yellow, stay with the orange. That works great. These two colors make the teal pop. And then I yep. want you to move this, this tape dispenser back a little bit so we don't see that part of the horizon. Let's have the horizon okay. come right through about there. And then turn it towards me so we see a big shadow of that stapler going all the way out there. Now, is, is the yellow a background and the orange a surface, or is it all surface? Are you, are you asking me? Or Yeah, I'm asking. Yeah, no, yeah well, it's, it's vertical. <laughs> the yellow is vertical? vertical? Yeah, yellow is vertical, and the yeah. orange is horizontal. Okay, good. Um, it would even be fun to get your light down lower and let that that um, uh, shadow go up the wall a little bit. Oh, yeah, I, I played with that a little bit. It, it, I don't know, it, I kind of lost it. I know last time you talked about my horizon lines and I've been trying to think about where the horizon line should be. And- um, Well, in this one, what I always look for um, is the curvature here, right? And if you see this little, where it gets to this point and comes around yeah, right there. That's a design element that it gets to here and starts to come around instead of just going straight down. That's a design element. If you crop above it, you put the horizontal horizon above it, we miss it. If you put it below it, it, it brings it out. It features it. So if that, that horizon line was down here even, then that circle would be in the yellow and therefore more featured than hiding it by putting the horizon either on it or just a little bit above it. It sneaks down. Um, but that would work fine. And especially with this background, this would be kind of fun to get that light right on the table and throw the, uh, get this, this unit back to where even the horizon's like right here. So it's right up against the paper and then get that thing down and have that big, almost elephant looking reflection shadow there. Yeah, the shadow, I mean. Yeah, yeah. Caught cool. Up trying to get the tape, the translucence of the yeah. tape. You, you did that <laughs> really well. I spent a lot of time with that tape, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> so, you did that yeah. really well. Uh, I was, I meant to compliment you on that. The getting, showing the tape is great. You may have to, when you're doing it, you may have to get like a white card over here and just get try to get an angle so the white card reflects on the tape a little bit. I, I had that and it was like it turned the tape white, very yeah. white. If, and and if I it couldn't does get that, rid of then, the reflection. Yeah. If it does that, then feather it or pull it back. The farther you pull it away from the light over here, the farther you pull away, the less white it's going to be. So you just keep pulling it back. Um, and then if it's still too bright, just twist it a little bit called a feather. And it'll soften this, make it a little bit smaller, but it'll be a little less glaring. I'll try that. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yeah, I'd get this. This is your light up. I get that thing yeah. right yeah. down here. Right level with that. Very cool. Good. Thank you, Don. Yes. Andreas, I don't know what this Hello, is. Don, how are Hi. You? What are we looking at here?
Oh, okay. So we're only seeing the, the shadow of this. And what is this material? What are we doing here? That's a, that's a broken tile from, from a bathroom. And I kind, kind of wanted to tell sort of a story that you need to fix the broken tile, you know? Okay. Very good. I like that. I like that. It's this is very, very I have modern. To admit that was modern. sorry. This is a very modern approach. Very, um, uh, almost avant-garde photograph, uh, with the writing in it, the shadow floating here. It looks very um, experimental, avant-garde. It's it's cool. It's very it's cool. I love I love to see work like this. Well, I I have to admit I love lines. I, I love to play with lines and and I I I wanted to um, like make the the shadow of the upcoming tile to meet the other tile. I I had a different idea at first, but it was uh, it was I was not able to to realize it. I wanted to like make the shadow touch the other tile, and you can see that the other tile was like broken and I, but I wanted to have it in, in the same angle, but it, it, it didn't work out. So I, I got, <clears throat> I came to this uh, solution and I, I, I wanted to like have this spatula, like a ghost mm -hmm. tool to, to like bring in the idea that you need to repair something, you know? And then you have this, this uh, reflection coming across here from the white tile. Right. Yes. That's, that's another dimension to the picture. You have so many dimensions here. You got the shadow. We got the background with no horizon. So all of a sudden, we are sort of like wondering what the plane of it is. Um, the, the two white tiles with with writing on them. And anytime you add writing to a picture, you know people are going to read it. And we see this. And then this floating spatula here. Um, it it's trying to remember the the photographer who did stuff like this oh. and I'm, I'm i'm going all the way back to the 40s the 1940s what was his name mm. uh, man ray what who man ray well man ray mostly shot people but yeah, Man Ray uh, definitely. Has talk that. about rayographs, uh, the, the ones that he put on paper, the objects that he directly put on paper and expose it to yeah. the Yeah, yeah, he, yeah. He was well, the guy who would put things on paper, light it up, and then, um, yeah, what were they called? Something amograms or something, something grams. Yeah, they, they uh, called them rayographs. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah, really uh, a fun shot on Andreas. At, at first it's a little you don't know what you're looking at, I, but uh, it's really a fun shot. Good job. Thank you. Can I ask a question? Yeah. Andreas, the, the left tile, is it directly on the surface or is it floating? Uh, the the left tile is on the surface, but I put a little angle behind I I I, I brought it up a little bit. You know, I put something under it that it would not lay oh. flat on the on the on the on the on the ground, but I brought it up just a little bit, and and I absolutely wanted to this line. I wanted to meet that shadow. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Very good. Thank you. Yep. Uh, do I see Carmen here? Carmen, 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 Carmen. No, Carmen. Oops, sorry. Uh, isn't that pretty? What a great eye. What a great eye. This tiny little flower, but the shadow is, you know, th four times the size of the flower. That's lovely. Outside. Yep. Oh, take the flower on the wall. There we go.
Yeah, beautiful work, Carmen. Just lovely. Just lovely. Is Alan Mason here yet? Okay. Christina Langford. Hello, hello, Don. Hi, Christina. Look at this. What? Oh. So. I wanted to experiment with an object, as you were talking about a couple of um, pictures ago, um, a horizontal surface and a vertical surface. I wanted to see how the bend would work. Mm -hmm. And so that was one of the first ones I did. So this, the photo, the image was actually rotated to the right. So it would stand up, but um, yeah. And the one thing I've learned, if I haven't learned anything else, you don't get an idea and post it late in this group because they've already done it. So <laughs> all the glass and things like that, that I was working on, uh, I went ahead and did something different because so many people had gotten there first, so. Very good. That's, this is a beautiful photograph. Thank you. I'm trying to figure out how you did it here. Well, it's the light going through that roll of tape right there. Okay. There's and a roll of uh, roll of tape. Yes, and then those two colors, and and it's shot at night, so the room is totally dark. And um, what did you photograph? How what what did you make a picture of? Of that light going through that circle, going straight through that circle. You have half of the circle makes half of the heart, and the other half makes a. Um, makes the vertical half of the, the circle. And so with the distance, it comes out, you'll see it the, on the right there, it comes out, the tail comes out there, they meet. Here? Yes, you go down a little bit further and you'll see where on the bottom where it ends there. Go all the way over a little bit more. Yeah, see what right, right, see where the dark, uh -huh. dark part of the shadow ends? That's the tail of the heart. Okay, that's... So it's really just shooting that circle in a way where it's far enough away where it, um, it ends at a point. That's so the red so is clever. Yeah. That's just really clever. I'd like to see a video of that. <laughs> it's probably the easiest thing I've done for this class. <laughs> that looks pretty cool to me. Thank you so much. Thanks. Alan is not here okay alan uh, wow that's cool that's got to be black and white right that's not color that's black and white i think that's very very nice this is so clever getting the paper to warp, using the curved part of the paper here for this i've never seen anyone do this i'm wouldn't be surprised if other people have done it, but I've not seen it. That's really surprising. Very fun. Look at how subtle. I love subtleties in pictures. Subtle, that little dark rim is, and setting off this plate. And over here, it's bold because we've got that hard shadow through here. And even the silverware itself has some nice lighting on it, not letting it go black everywhere. Right in there, there. Yeah. Alan, that's a that's a fun shot. That's a fun shot. Let's see what you did. Outside. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's that's fun. That's good. All right. Uh, Giannis. Hi. Hello there. Hey, Giannis. This is. So clever, this clay where it's like pulled out of the clay. Yeah. I had to do something. I had nothing for a background. I hadn't used everything. And I thought, okay, let's get flour and make something out of it. I took my shirts off, <laughs> make made a print there just to be creative, you know. So what is I it? Had those two. Plaster or concrete or something? Uh, what the surface? Yeah, the surface is flour. Oh, flour. Fla fl flour. Yeah. Okay. Uh, maybe I uh, I don't spell it right, but yeah, I had to do that to make that print there. 
mm -hmm. then making like a moon surface, you know, yeah, more or less kind of a cool thing. Beautiful. I have uh, two fragrances to shoot on my uh, studio. I use them here. I don't know what they say, but I don't care. <laughs> yeah. I just get them. Uh, yeah, this is what I always love about your work. It's so meticulous. See this? It never, we never lose the bottle edge, guys. We never lose the bottle edge. We never lose the cap edge. Uh, up here, even though, see, you got this bright highlight here, folks. See this? Which is not too far away from that tonality, right? But then there's that little black line, that little, you know, anti reflection right there yeah. that stops it and and is and forms the bottle highlighting the cap is really pretty too as is the color now is did you color the flower is it a gray flower or is it just... no it's not gray i turned it into black and white because itself from oh. uh, the camera oh. uh, straight out of camera it had uh, that yellowish cast i didn't like that I did uh, color balance. I did whatever. I use everything to my studio. Everything I did, but still, it had that uh, yellowish cast. I didn't like yeah. that. Yeah, you'll see that from the uh, behind the scenes. From the uh, yeah, you see that uh, what color it has. Yeah, that, yeah. Uh, yellowish. You know, I didn't like that to leave it like that. So I thought better to turn it on uh, black and white. It's more, uh, uh, more good. It gives more good feeling, more depth, yeah, more I, texture. Yeah, yeah. I agree. I agree. This is really, yeah. uh, really well done. Yeah, from uh, the first shot, I, uh, I it was just for the highlights from the behind the scenes. The second was for the shadows because I want texture to see the shadows. I don't want them to go totally black. The third one is uh, about for the label on the upper left bottle. And uh, then I brought in the second light, the strip south box to make those uh, lights there, the shoulder and the cap light from the upper bottle. And the final, the five one, the image five is for the, for the label. It's uh, very reflective silver one and i had i made like 20 30 shots for the label to make the reflection with a black and white card till i got like 50 and i chose at the end three shots to make the label yeah it was uh cool but also challenging for me yeah, it may not yeah. be that uh, what you wanted this assignment but i hadn't anything else to shoot no that's good no, it's a good shot. Yanis? Can, yeah, can I who's ask? that? Yeah, it's Jan here. Hi, Yanis. Oh, hello. Um, hi. Can I ask how you got the the flower in black and white, how you treated the very ah, difficult you, area? You, it how seemed... I converted it, you mean? No, I mean, yeah, yeah. But I mean, there's an area on the upper left bottle, the, sh the shadow it casts, there's an area where it transitions from blue um, yeah. to, to translucent. And how, how did you, is, is that, was that a problem or? No, 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 I don't have problems with uh, retouching at all. Uh, what I do actually on my uh, workflow is uh, that I know very well luminosities. I work a lot with uh, luminosities. I just take tonalities. That's why I mirror the, the scene always. I mirror for highlights, I mirror for shadows, I mirror for mid-tones. I metered in this case for the blue tones. So I knew that my blue tone, it was uh, like, uh, let's say 95 tonality in uh, the RGB scale. And I chose that, selected the blue one, saved it, and then turned the image into black and white, and then brought back again the blue tone. So I had no loss at all in uh, the tonalities on the scale from zero to 55. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of very addicted to those things with uh, luminosity, but this is the way I work. This is the way I've ever oh, yeah. used. Yeah. Makes sense, because I, I wouldn't have known how to preserve that gradient when you turn part of it. Oh, gr uh, <laughs> gradients are done directly from shot. I never touch uh, gradients. No, no, I know, but, yeah. but yeah. how to preserve the gradient in the image when you want 
part of it going black and white but yeah because if you know it, yeah um, if you know how you shoot a shot your frame your exposure uh, what tonality it has how you shot the uh, highlights as i said mid-tones uh, etc mm -hmm. you know how to do the uh, yeah, the conversion because you, you know where your tonalities are this is what yeah. i do yeah, yeah. Right. actually i never i never re do retouching on my photo never do that i do retouching on fly on the blending itself because i have already tonalities and that's tonalities like a doge and burn like uh, whatever is done. I, I do little things like uh, with healing brush, like uh, dust removal, you know, this kind of thing. Mm. But I, I don't spend too much time on uh, retouching at all. I have no time to do that because I have so many shots to do on my studio. Mm. This is why. Mm. But uh, you, yeah. you, you, it is a very good question. You, you ask that because everyone asks me that. But in the, yes, guys, I work with the luminosities. This is why I... I control my luminosity there. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Jan. Thanks, Janis. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Cool. Very good stuff. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dan. Uh, Vasanta. This must have been a busy Saturday for a lot of folks. Lighting expanded in several attempts at positioning here in the strobe light with a modeling lamp. Okay. Okay. Still not really getting it. Okay. This is a, there's a lot going on here, folks, that I honestly don't understand. Gobo. Wow, a lot going on to the picture. Uh, it's very kind of cool, green and red up here, like a stoplight in my mind. Uh, and then the hands holding it from the bottom, it's flipped. I don't, and I think the color is done in, done by shooting a red and a green filter and then Photoshopped in both sides here, I think. Uh, I wish Vasanta was here. There's a lot going on in this picture. Patricia Keegan. Hi, Dom. Hi, Patricia. How are you? Not bad. This is so pretty. Look at your highlights. These are like, it's like plain. It's, you know, it's like, yeah, we've seen that. Yes, that's really pretty, very pretty. And then down here, it's like a different planet. Every one of these things. Really, really fun. The colors, yeah, it's just really nice. This this is uh, daylight, I take it. Yeah, sorry, I have no behind the scenes. I, I just took it outside. I was actually intending to use a flash, but um, the sun came out in the UK, so I said, "Here, I'll go outside." Mm -hmm. But I did have a problem with the blue um, one. It's kept reflecting everything. I think it might have been the shape of the glass because i had three different glasses uh-huh so the blue was re was reflecting what sky and bubble and clouds and everything uh, yeah anything and everything and i couldn't get rid of it <laughs> so i'm not sure what oh it's the darkest color here you know the darker the color the more the reflection all right yeah okay and how can you tell that it was done in daylight anybody there's a giveaway. If you're working in you the studio- You can see the hard shadows, the sharp shadows. Oh, there's very yeah. sharp, sharpness. that's true. But if you're working in the studio and you have a single light over here, because you're only six or eight feet away, these tend ah, to be You can there. see the shadows go, they are not straight. They are in a right. different, they, uh, they different spread. directions. Right. Yeah. The sun is 93 million miles away. There's, there's a spread here, but we can't see it. <laughs> it's just- too far away for that um that's a so that's, good point i didn't actually i, I wasn't thinking of that actually <laughs> yeah i was nightmare when you're in the studio and my my uh studio mate was hired to do a shot it's very similar to this um but 
no matter what you did on a camera, you're going to be looking at, you know, if you're looking at this one here, you're looking at that one's a little bit over there and that one's a little bit over here, but their layout said this had to be shot straight on, this had to be shot straight on, this had to be shot straight on yeah, in one single that's shot. That's why I did with the last one. When we, yeah. we it couldn't be done, he couldn't do it. So he cre created a, a track system on the floor, real crude track system on the floor. And he shot the first one with an eight by 10 here and the second one with an eight by 10 here and the third one with an eight by 10 over here. But he shot it on one sheet of film. So the sheet of film, not eight by 10, we made holders that it did that. And then we had a holder that was like that. Then we had a holder that was like that. So the sheet of film had person on the right, person in the center, person over here, shot from three different cameras, all going straight at it. And then, and, uh, man, that was a, that was the day that, uh, that he exhausted every curse word known to the English, French, and Italian language. That was a tough one. And I was super thrilled because I didn't have to do it. I didn't want to do that. That wasn't my kind of photography. Oh, that's the back behind the scenes for Vasanta. Okay, gosh. Next week, I'm going to ask him about that. Andrea. Hi, Don. Hi, how are you? I'm fine, and you? So cool. This is so cool. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. Oh, that's so cool. So that's a piece of black paper and white paper. Yes. And your strobe yes. is over here just throwing a shadow. It's not the strobe, it's the sun. The sun, okay. Yes, sunlight. Yeah. Plain sunlight. That's, uh, that's very clever. That's Thank very you. clever, yeah. Simple items, simple. Simple photograph and yet surprising. Thank you. It wasn't easy to do because, well, you know, the sun moves. So. Yeah, it does. And uh, we never really think about it until we're doing this and we find out it moves constantly. constantly. And quite fast. Yep. Yep. That's just lovely, Andrea. That's just really fun. Just fun. Thank you. I'm happy for that shot. There you go. Uh, wait a minute. You're showing the top at the top. Is that how you shot it? Well, I shot several tries. So is this is this, this one the other way around? Yeah. I turned it upside down after. So. Okay, so this we're looking down into it from this. Got it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, because I looked over and I went, wait a minute, that's, that ain't how yeah, it's it works. <laughs> right. I was cheating. Very cool, very cool, very, very cool. Wow, Asha, this is nice too. Wow, that's neat. Hi, Don. Hi. Wow. You created a, a yoga person. <laughs> Something like that, yes. It's a nutcracker and a why a corkscrew yeah well, that's just so cool such a great idea love the tonality of your lighting here um the silver objects we've got some nice patina all the way through here enough black to give it shape we know what it is um as far as identifying the items you know we can figure it out in a moment or two but at first you kind of go i don't know what it is but the shadow is the whole point of the shot. You know, this is two things here, but the shadow is you created like this, this um, alien <laughs> being here. Is this daylight? No, no. there's no daylight here right now. <laughs> Bare bulb. Now, what's do you have a you have a fill card here? I see. Do you have a fill card? No, over no, here no, as well? no, 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 no. I don't have any fill cards. I just kept that so that you don't get to see the back of it oh okay I took the... so There's no, no card. Card, nothing 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 
Okay, so the paper itself is doing natural fill in here. Yep. Background itself is doing it. Nice. Thank really you. nice. Super Thank cool you. shot, Asha. If you've got any um, contests coming up in your neighborhood, I'd be entering that. <laughs> right. All right, so how do I get back? What happened, guys? Where did my... Um... Somehow I am not on where I can get back to the um, thumbnails. I always have to do this again. Uh, and we had uh, Lee was not here. Uh, Lee, I think this is really pretty. Not only did you use reflections and shadows, I mean the shadows, you use the reflections coming down in here as well it's really pretty there's this very interesting shape going on here i don't know what it is i don't dislike it because it's kind of interesting but i don't know what it is so let us know that's a really really nice shot a very nice shot um who else did we miss you guys remember They weren't here. Uh, was it just Lee? I guess it was. Everybody else. All right. Very cool. Very cool. Any questions about uh, what you did? How you can use this? Because you can use it in just about anything. Did we miss anybody's photographs? Okay. Any questions or comments? I hope you like the assignment. It's always one of my favorites. It was a lot of fun. Interesting. Good. Definitely a right. challenge. Yeah, I loved it. Thank you so much, Don. Absolutely. All right, guys, we got one more. We got one more. And this one is going to drive Giannis crazy. Oh, what's that? <laughs> One big light, no Photoshop. Oh, okay. Oh, no Photoshop? Photoshop? Well, you can clean it up, you can whatever, but no multiple Blending. shots. Okay, I, I, I have no problem with that. One shot. You can use Photoshop okay. to clean it up to your heart's content. <laughs> I just don't want uh, collage. Okay. Oh, that mm -hmm. works. That's how I shoot now anyway. <laughs> yeah. Big, big light. All right. Hey, Don, Let's before we go, any thoughts about what we'll do for the next uh, set or whatever? Don't know yet. Don't, but don't next know week yet. is the last one? Yeah, next week's yeah. the last one. Next week. Yep. Oh, okay. And um, uh, I, I don't know yet. One of the <laughs> one of the things I'm, I'm working on right now is I've got two uh, courses that I want to fix. One of them is natural light portraits. Uh, I have a bunch of shooting to do for that, uh, but it's mostly done. Um, and I've got uh, one on uh, tabletop that I want to get out. So I'll be working mostly on that. And then we'll see what uh, the next one brings. However, starting in mid-August, watch for little one-off assignments on the Facebook group. Okay. So there'll be, uh, there may not be any rhyme or reason to them. There won't be like, you know, a group of them. Might just be a one off assignment um, to keep everybody challenged until we get I'm to the next in, focus group. In trying, I'm interested in trying to do a food or beverage shot. Say it again. I, I'm interested in trying to do a food or beverage shot sometime because that's something I've never done. Very cool. Yeah. 
Yeah, we did. Uh, we did one of these on on food. We've done one on beverages. Did one on adult beverages. We've done splash, splash shots. So I've got all this stuff to pull from, and I'll be pulling a little one from this one here, and one from here, and one from there, and and putting them up. So there'll be something every month, at least every month. There'll be something in there to to see and work on and learn from, hopefully. So anything else? Uh, after you stop the recording for this, can I just ask you a, a couple of questions? You want me to stop the recording? Because I'll say bye. Well, when you're done. When, when yeah. you're done. All right. If there's nothing else, everybody have a great one. Thank you, Don. Thank you, Don. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Don.